Hi, I'm Dana and today I really want to talk about autistic special interests because I feel like it's something neurotypicals often don't understand and something that we're all too often shamed for and I don't think that's right so I wanted to do a little bit of education for the neurotypicals and a little bit of like hey you can relate to me we're all we're not all the same in the slightest we're all very different but we all have similarities that we can relate to so that's that's what this video is so i want to start off by pointing out that a special interest is not a hobby autistic people can and do have both special interests and hobbies for example i would say that making videos is just a hobby it's not something that i think about all the time you know it's something that i'm passionate about it's something that i care about a lot it's a hobby <laughs> But special interests are much more intense. Special interests are when like I will just constantly be thinking about that thing. I am all consumed by it basically. And although I'm very passionate about making videos, that's that's not the case here. It is just a hobby. It's just a passion. It's not a special interest because we can have both. I think often as well, autistic people are seen as having one special interest. You know, we see it all the time when people are in movies that are meant to be autistic. We've, we've seen Walter in Scorpion that's just obsessed with math. We've seen Arbor that's just obsessed with like movies. Same dude. <laughs> you know, like when we see autistic people in media especially, they tend to have this one special interest and that's their special interest and it's only that. And at least in my experience, that's totally not the case. I have like a dozen special interests. But not all special interests are the same either, they have a varying level of intensity and they can come and go, you know? An autistic person could be really into dinosaurs when they were a kid, like I was, and I'm, I'm not really all that into dinosaurs anymore, like I think they're cool. But when I was a kid I was obsessed with knowing like every single dinosaur name and where was this found and how was it fossilised and how did it come to be and what would it look like today, what do we think it looked like, how do we think it sounded? You know, it was constant back then and nowadays like I don't think I've watched anything to do with dinosaurs in about six years. You know, they're cool, but I don't really care. So some special interests just fade away like that one did. And other special interests sort of just get put on the back burner. Like, I'm always into Doctor Who. Doctor Who is always my second favourite show of all time because I found Ashes to Ashes, I'm sorry. There's never a time that I don't want to watch Doctor Who. But there's also sometimes when I don't want to watch anything but Doctor Who. You feel me? Like, right now, if someone put on an episode of Doctor Who, I'd, I'd sit back and watch it because it's Doctor Who, I love it. But I'm not about to put on an episode of Doctor Who myself. Whereas three months ago, all I watched was Doctor Who. All I cared about was Doctor Who. If I was reading, I was reading either a Doctor Who novel or a Doctor Who fanfic. If I was looking at pictures on Instagram, it was pictures of Jodie Whittaker. There's times when it is all consuming and it's like the focus of my entire life. And there's times when it's just something that I really love. But with them coming and going, one of the worst times for me in life is when I'm in between special interests. It sucks. I don't know what to do with myself. I'll watch things and just be like, I'm not really that into this. I'll read something and be like, I'm not really that into this. And I have to just spend sometimes months just sat there sort of waiting for the next interest to come along. Um, a great example of this would be that last summer, my entire life was community. If I wasn't watching Community, I was reading Community fanfics. If I couldn't currently watch or read anything, I was probably listening to Childish Gambino. Like, I bloody loved Community. And I still really like it, but I haven't watched it in months. And after I'd finished watching it and I sort of got my fill of it, I'd listened to everything, I'd read everything, I'd watched all the interviews, I didn't sort of have anything left. And it was sort of, okay, I've enjoyed that. What next? what next i've got nothing now that's gone i'm not like completely engulfed with it anymore what do i do now and i had to just sort of sit and wait like four months until i finally watched ashes to ashes for the first time and was like this <laughs> this and i've watched that eight times now you know um that's a lie i'm on my eighth where you watch but i've got like two episodes left and there's the two that make me cry so i'm avoiding them but like that just goes to show how incredibly intense it is it's not just a show that i enjoy i'm avoiding watching something that i want to watch because of how deeply it hurts me and i know it's just a show that's why i can laugh about it i know it's, it's not bloody real but the emotions that it makes me feel are very 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 real and you know it's 
for me, special interests, like I say, they are all consuming. So you might think like, oh, she really likes Ashes to Ashes. She must watch it quite a lot. Bitch, I dress like Alex Drake. <laughs> I've completely changed some of my wardrobe. I've altered some of the ways that I dress. I bought the same coat that she had in the show. It's unfortunately not the one that Keely always wore. I would have bought that if I could, but I like did an hour of Googling to find out who made this bloody coat. I want to be Alex Drake. I found who made the coat and I bought the coat. <laughs> and I love it. Every time I put it on, I'm just like, oh, ashes, you know? But how many neurotypical people when they enjoy a show will then buy an item that was made for the show and just wear that in day-to-day -day life so that they can keep a part of it with them. <laughs> I've, I've just realised like how autistic that is. And I love it, don't get me wrong, but like, wow. Um, but you might be thinking if this is a show that like I've spent a ridiculous amount of money buying essentially merch from it because there's no real merch. I've spent countless hours watching it. It's pretty much what I think about most of the time. I'm dressing like the main character. I'm only listening to 80s music. Why would that be enjoyable? And it's it's a good question that I can't explain very well. But it's a case of something there in any special interest that an autistic person has, including myself, there's something there that's like caught our interest that's made us go, ooh. <laughs> like like when you drink Thai food, you've just gone, ooh. There's just something about it that you can't get enough of. You know, even if you've watched like every bit of special features and every interview and every episode and everything you can find and read all the fanfics, you just can't get enough of it because it's, I think probably some autistic people are better at being like, oh, I can accept that this isn't the most perfect thing in the world, but I love it regardless. Not me. I'm like, if, if someone sat me down and asked me to talk about ashes, I could spend an hour talking about how I think the fact, like the fact that I think the writing is perfect, the acting is perfect, the, the, the wardrobe is perfect, the setting is perfect. Like, I think it's a flawless show. And admittedly, it's easier with things like Ashes than it is with Doctor Who, where you've got, you know, like 60 years almost of content. And I think that from season seven to about season 11 was a pile of shit. But my focus and my hyper focus when I get into Doctor Who again just goes to the bits that I really love and enjoy and just focus on them but I still watched every single episode I've seen every episode of Doctor Who that you can see more than once even if I hated it I hated Missy and I've still watched like every interview I could find with Michelle Gomez you know even when it's not perfect even when you don't like some parts of it you're so invested in it and so consumed by it and so in love with it that it just, for me, it completely relaxes me. Like all of my special interests have always been media related. It's always movies, TV shows, books. And it's a case of after spending all day feeling so anxious and having to mask and having to do this and having to like be a person, I can sit down and just completely escape with these characters that I absolutely adore, with things that I think are so well-crafted and I just love them so much. You know, and I've got so much passion to like know everything that I can about these things. For something that's so often shown as being restrictive or obsessive or damaging, I find it really, really beautiful. You know, I, I really fall in love with these things in the same way that you fall in love with other people. Like I would honestly say that I love some of these things like nearly as much as I love my mum or my boyfriend. Like I love them with such an intensity and such a passion. How's that bad? You know, and going along with people often say that special interests are restrictive. I completely disagree. And obviously this is purely from my own experience. But when I, for example, I was really into Tim Burton as a teenager. So I watched every Tim Burton movie I could find and all the interviews and blah, blah, blah. And then when there was no more, I was like, well, I want there to be more. And Johnny Depp's in all these Tim Burton movies. So if I just then watch everything with Johnny Depp in, that's gonna be fab, isn't it? I, I loop and, and reach and jump about and one special interest can lead me into the next one. Like I'm currently watching everything Keely Hawes has ever done. So you can say it's restrictive all you want, but I went from watching some time travel show to watching Rebecca and Summer of the Rockets, you know? Like I've watched stuff I never ever would have watched and really enjoyed it as well. Like I watched Othello the other day because Keely Hawes is in it. That's not restrictive, that's not damaging, that's not a bad thing. 
And I, w I will say that I'm lucky, I think, and I think this goes for a lot of autistic women, in that our interests do tend to be more socially acceptable. You know, like, I think I had a much easier time being obsessed with Doctor Who in school than I would have been if I'd been obsessed with aeroplanes. You know, people probably would have been a damn sight me in a team if having an out there interest like that than they were for being into a TV show that I just started. But if other people are feeling that same level of love and passion that I feel for, for my TV shows for other things, I don't think they're bad things either, you know, unless it's something that's unhealthy or damaging to them or others around them. Like if your special interest is drugs, you might need to find a new one. But for most general things, they're very innocent. It's, it's not damaging at all. It's only damaging when you're made to feel bad for being interested in these things or made to feel bad for the level of passion and love that you have for things. And especially for so many of us, I think, because obviously Doctor Who and Lord of the Rings and going further like Marvel and, and the X-Men and things like that, it tends to draw in autistic people. We see a character who accepts everyone who's maybe a little different themselves and so on and so forth. And we're very attracted to that and we get very into them. And we've formed some of the best safe spaces ever around these things. You know, like I have never felt more comfortable and ha like free to be myself than I have at Comic-Con. And I wouldn't have gotten there if it hadn't been that I've been obsessed with Doctor Who for years. My special interests haven't just created a safe space within my home when I'm watching them or engaging with them. They've created safe spaces that I can look forward to and meet other people that are like me and make friends and socialise and meet the people out of the things. It's so cool. And, you know, lots and lots of neurotypical people, more than ever, are going to Comic-Cons. So how come it's so bizarre and damaging and restrictive for me to do it, but fine for them to do it? Much as I truly love being so passionate and intense with the things that I love, there, there is the downside, you know? Sometimes you can get a little too into things. You can... I find that I quite often end up quite hyper-focused on things. And, you know, that can mean that eight hours later, I'm standing up realising I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I need to pee and every muscle in my body hurts because I haven't moved in hours. And, you know, that's not great. It's not the best. I've missed going to things that I've scheduled. I've missed meeting up with friends and things because I was so intensely focused on, on reading this book or watching this movie or, or reading a fanfic, let's face it. And that sucks. And I don't mean to be a bad friend but it makes me look like I'm just a bad friend. Like you couldn't be bothered hanging out with me because you were watching a film. Come on. And I get that, I, I agree for, thoroughly, but I can't help it. And I do think it's important to mention the downsides of things w with any neurodiversity, because I think that there needs to be the reality of what it's like to live with these things out there. But the negatives need to be talked about alongside the positives, in my opinion, in order to form a better narrative to what it's like to be autistic and to ensure that we're able to receive the support that we need regardless of, of what support it is we need. Because if you just present it as a positive, people are only going to think that it's a positive. And the reality is that very few things are entirely positive. And that's autism too. Being autistic has its positives and its negatives. Special interests have, in my opinion, for me, huge positives and a few negatives. Like, hyper-focus predominantly. It's the hyper-focus. The hyper-focus always just gets me. And it's hard because I'm the only person that can break that. But I'm too hyper-focused on what I'm doing to even realise that I'm in hyper-focus until, you know, hours have passed and I come out of a bit and I'm like, oh god, everything hurts. I'm so hungry. So if you're the parent of someone that's autistic, let them engage in their special interests and just support them while they're doing it, I suppose. You know, make sure they're being healthy. Make sure that they're, they're eating, sleeping, peeing make sure they're okay still but let them engage in it they're just enjoying themselves and having fun they found something that can relieve some anxiety and offer some escapism and make them feel better it can ground them it can just bring them so much happiness and enjoyment don't take it away from them come on and if you're an autistic adult like me please just give in to them sometimes just allow yourself that joy still be responsible if you're going to end up super hyper focused like i do don't start doing whatever it is right before you need to be in work or whatever but let yourself be happy please like come on who's it hurting if you're enjoying it if it's making you happy just do it i think this might be my like rambliest video to date but my special interest has always just been such a part of who i was even before i knew that i was autistic 
it's hard to fully quantify it into words. It's, it's really difficult to put it into words how much these things mean to me and how much they affect me, I suppose. There's better words, but I've been talking for a while. <laughs> if you've watched me for this long, you may as well subscribe because you've watched the entire video i'm about to round this up and say goodbye so you may as well subscribe at this point maybe drop me a little like if you want it always makes me smile when i see that i've gotten a like uh i try not to be too into numbers but it's still really nice isn't it like validate me go on so <laughs> so that's the video i hope that if you didn't know about this i hope i've educated you a little bit and helped you learn a little bit if you're already well into this and already very aware of what it is because you're autistic too i hope that you've been able to relate a little and feel a little more normalised and a little more like you accepted and like you're loved because you are. That was really lame, but I meant it thoroughly. So take of that what you will. I'm gonna go. I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you're having a lovely life. I hope you're enjoying your special interest if you're autistic too. Let me know what it is down below. Maybe I'll get into it too. Um, that's the last thing I need, but go ahead and do it anyway. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.